Hello everyone, today I'm going to share about my views on the short-term market outlook. This is a follow-up on my previous video that was published towards the end of March. I hope this video can give you a sense of what to expect in the next couple of weeks. But a quick disclaimer, what I'm going to share are just my personal views and definitely not financial advice, alright? Okay, before I dive into the details, quick shout out, I am hoping to get 100 subscribers. So please subscribe to my channel if you found my videos useful and have not subscribed. Your little support means a lot to me. In my previous video, I mentioned that the market will likely pull back a little bit at the point when it was going up. Despite the multiple bullish trends showing on various stock charts, and S&P 500 off to a best rally in more than 70 years at the start of a hiking cycle, I also shared my view that it could be time for the market to take a break or cool down, simply because the market will never go up in a straight line. Then, as we enter April, the major indices and stocks started its pullback. So now the million dollar question is, will this pullback test the previous lows in Feb and March? To be honest, it's anyone's guess at the moment as the current market is full of uncertainties and unknowns. Therefore, why not take a step back to focus on the known stuff that are happening right now and in the near future, and see where it leads us to. The overall market is looking weak at the moment. I have posted on Momo on 9 March that there is a chance of downside for Apple, Tesla, Google and Microsoft. For those who are interested, here are some quick and simple technical analysis. Based on the daily chart, there was a MACD crossover for all the 4 stocks that I have mentioned on last Thursday and Friday. Then, the RSI indicator did not show them reaching the oversold areas, which means there were still room for sell-off. In addition, Google and Microsoft closed below 200 moving average and 50 moving average at the end of last week. This shows that the pullback will likely continue into early this week at least. Okay, enough of last week because hindsight is always 2020. So let's talk about this week and the weeks ahead. First up, several big cap stock charts are looking bearish. For example, heads and shoulder pattern, which is a bearish sign, has been spotted on Microsoft weekly chart, and it may potentially break below the neckline in the coming week. Next, for Nvidia, given its current downtrend and bad news surrounding the chip industry, the 50 moving average has a high probability of crossing 200 moving average very soon, which is commonly known as death cross. Though it may seen as a lagging indicator, it is still a sign of a very bearish trend. Now let's have a look at Google. A bearish harami candlestick pattern was formed on the weekly chart and the downtrend is further confirmed by another long red candlestick down. To add on, if you notice, the harami candlestick tried to break the upward resistance and failed. Finally, retail investors favorite Tesla. On the weekly chart, it is showing a bearish engulfing candlestick. So both weekly charts seem to tell us that there will be more downside coming up. Moving on, let's take a look at tickle symbols that track the main indices. For SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 index, we just saw it close below 100 moving average and 50 moving average on Monday, which is a bearish signal. Then for QQQ, we saw it got rejected at 61.8 Fibonacci retracement and then it gapped down on Monday and closed below 50 moving average. As we know, QQQ tracks the Nasdaq 100, which has lots of tech stocks in it. You know, the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Google, etc. Therefore, it is not surprising that it goes down together with the tech giants. To highlight, when these stocks start to close below the various moving averages, namely 50, 100, and 200, more often than not, algorithms set by the institutional investors will kick in and trigger more sell-off. With all being said, there could be a dead cap bound somewhere this or next week as most stocks are oversold. And also, there were two gaps down earlier. The market may retrace up to fill the gaps, cool off the indicators before coming down again. Okay, now let's take a look at the macro factors. The US 10-year yield rose to the highest level since 2019. Historically, rising bond yields will negatively impact the stock market. I will not elaborate too much on this as I tried to compress this video with summarized information. Anyway, some may say that history is not a good indication of future performances. But well, history often rhymes, so perhaps better to be safe than sorry. Then, come next month, the Federal Reserve could raise the interest rate by 50 basis points to combat inflation. 
and we will also see them reducing their balance sheet, aka pumping less money into the economy. So, you have high interest rate, high borrowing costs, less money in the economy, all this will generally hurt the stock market as investors may start transferring their money from stocks to safer options. Under such a scenario, overvalued stocks will likely feel the impact the most, especially those that are not in profits yet. Therefore, this could be the period where investors realise that the traditionally strong companies still work better. I mean, they may not give you 5x or 10x returns, but they give you steady gains yearly. So here are my thoughts. Overall, I think it's going to be very choppy from now till May at least. But does this mean all hope is lost? Not really. I have mentioned in a few of my videos that corrections or crashes often followed by a sharp recovery and bear markets last shorter than bull markets. Also, I could be very wrong and this pullback may just end this week and then we are up to all-time high. If that happens, I'm not complaining as my portfolio will be as green as the trees in our sunny island. Anyway, the point of this video is if you are a trader, trade with care because market makers love such a volatile market and they can wipe out both puts and calls options if they want. So if you are not an experienced trader or had just started trading recently, you may want to be a little more careful as it's gonna be a tough year navigating the choppy market. You could of course lower your capital and manage your risk and then learn along the way. You know it's like playing mahjong, they always say that you need to pay a little school fees before you are good at it, right? But of course I hope you can trade well and gain some profits instead of incurring losses. But a little loss is okay as we all live to fight and trade another day. But if you are a long-term investor, my view is still the same. DCA periodically, don't throw all your money in at one go this year. Do it in tranches. In 10 years time, you will probably forget what happened in 2022. It's likely to be just another dot-com bubble, another covid crash, another correction. The market still goes up eventually. So think long-term, not short-term. Look at the bigger picture and you should do fine. Alright, that's all for this video. Hope you found this video useful. If so, do let me know in the comments section below. Lastly, thanks for watching my video. Hope you can like, share and subscribe to my channel to show a little support. Thank you.